and a welcome to the channel and in this video we're going to be doing a little uh, exotic garden May walk around. Now unfortunately May hasn't been particularly warm so far and some of the nights have been a bit chilly plus we've had copious amounts of rain. So the plants that you would have expected to be flourishing a wee bit at this time of year have really started to do too much. So what we'll do, we'll have a little walk around, see what's going on and uh, and hopefully put up a few things of interest uh, for you to think about or look into a wee bit more. Anyway, with no further ado, let's start the tour. So seasonal temperatures are definitely on the rise. We've got the uh, beginnings of all the succulent plants coming out, fully hardened off and ready in their positions. We've got a few more over here that are awaiting to be, just a, a few more days, a little bit more sun on these before I put them out in there final position of full sun. The banana, that's, uh, well all the new growth that's come out has got a little bit of scorch, but as soon as the this secondary lot of leaves comes out, they'll be absolutely fine. And uh, and there's the lovely Lorna, doing a little bit of work, extending our patio. Look, there's no breakfast until you finish this flipping job. You know what Simon said to me? Put on your concreting clothes, get out there. Oh, it's just chat from her. More work in, less talking. Now, before we go into the garden proper, I want to show you this fella here. This is an actinidia. It's not actinidia chinensis, which has got like the, the wider leaf, the old Chinese kiwi. This is, uh, this is a, a selective form called Maloides, and Maloides means like Malus. So uh, you think, well, what on earth is that got to do with Malus? You, you know, Malus is sort of crab apples and apples. Well, it's because of the, the um, it's because of the, oh, look, I've got a flower. Because the flower looks a little bit like a crab apple flower, and that's why Ace, uh, Ace Maloides, it's Nidia Maloides. So, um, I particularly like this one. I hadn't seen this one before. I saw this um, first time was at Wisley, and I absolutely love Wisley. And the reason why I particularly like this particular form, this is a male form, so you won't get any kiwis on this. Is it's much more delicate, it's elongated, it's very lovely, but obviously the, the real show uh, on this plant is when you start getting this white coloration. You used to get, when they used to sell those back in the day, every summer people come back saying, oh, my plant's got fungus on it. Well, it's not it's supposed to look like that, you crazy loonies. Read a book one time. Um, now, the problem I got with this this year that I didn't have last year uh, is flipping snails. Have been snails and slugs. Now I thought I dealt with this, but um, look, I got fresh new damage from the slugs. So it's really got to go. You've got to slide about um, six meters across concrete to get it. So I put in another slug pub just to keep an eye on that. But that only went on this morning, so I don't expect anything to go in that today. But what I will do is get back out into the garden once it gets dark with a pair of gloves and a bag and start checking with my lovely little torch and see if I can find the little critters while they're actually being active and that way hopefully as part of my slug management and snail management program I'll be able to clear out all those damaging my lovely plants. Okay I've kicked Lauren off the cement in so she can make me some lunch. I, mean, I don't know what she's thinking. I mean seriously can I you can't expect me to watch TV and cook my own dinner at the same time. Anyway, you see this plant over here? This is a Brugmansia. And um, we, had the, no, we had a problem with this when we bought it because uh, it just rips through the nitrogen and, um, and it, it gives out these uh, very, very yellow leaves. I've been feeding this quite a lot recently. You can see that this yellowing is starting to change. The vein is changing and you're starting to see the chlorophyll pigments come up to standard. But I reckon a couple more weeks of a heavy feed and this will start to go back being green. But I think this year what I'll do is I'll get this in the ground and, uh, and give it some winter protection this year. I mean, it's got the fence next to it. I'm gonna be putting another one of these uh, panels across here anyway in the next couple of days to uh, make it a little bit nicer, get this um, get this lovely uh, vine travelling across the top of it, make it a little bit more attractive, but uh, it's just so many jobs to do at this time of year, it's, it's really difficult just to keep on top of them. Um, now I've got a alocasia here, plain green one, it's not the uh, sort of the variety that was on the label, here is the label. Seriously, is that, is that that? Is it, is it, is it that? Of course not. All they do is lie all the time. Um, but I brought it out. I'm quite happy for this to be outside so long as night temperatures remain above 8 degrees. Anything lower than that, I've got to bring it back in. But I repotted it this year to a much bigger pot because I'm expecting when this gets uh, 
warmer later on this year. I'm going to have some massive growth on this and some huge leaves, and I've got to have a big pot on it. But the trouble is, that's as big a pot as I'm going to be able to move going into the year. So once it outgrows this, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Now, bit by bit, I'm clearing out this greenhouse. There's some projects for videos that we had done earlier in the year, but a lot of it is coming along um, and will soon need to be hardened off so we can clear the whole greenhouse and start putting on some edible crops. We've got some tomatoes going in, got some peppers going in. Um, over there, we've got some uh, basil, coriander, and a fancy kind of million bells sort of tomato there. So it's all little bits and bobs we've picked up along the way. Things will be interesting. Hopefully, later on, We'll, uh, we'll add these to some more videos, but for now, hardening off is the key. So I'll show you what we're hardening off right now. So you brought one lot uh, out of the greenhouse and put it under the um, apple tree that's here. So for the core part of the day, um, this is all under shade, all these dapple shade for now until the foliage grows out a wee bit more. So all this will need to be here for about a week or two, and then we'll start moving these out into their final position. So the potatoes will go out into full sun by the, you know, so it's south, south facing all year round, because as you know, these are South American tropical plants, and they need the heat and the light on these to get your best crop. So that'll be moved out. And then we've got some cosmeres, we've got a um, Canary Island uh, geranium there. There's other bits and bobs that I can't quite see. But uh, it's all stuff that you, if you put it straight out, you like to get sun scorched, it's going to damage it, hold it back, you know. And worst case scenario, if you've got very soft plants going out in full sun, just kill them off, um, you know, especially small seedlings that you're trying to get ready. Um, what else have we got? These cacti, these have already been hardened off, and they're going to be looking quite nice. We, we haven't had any problems with these scorching, although I did have a little bit of scorch on this one, which is an absolute pain because this is supposed to be getting ready for a show later on in the year, but that might have to be swapped out for one of the others. We've got various bird paradise uh, here and another one over there. Again, these have all been hardened off. Got a little bit of scorch in these, but it's been difficult to find something big enough to act as a as a good kind of shade thing because when these came out apple tree had no uh, leaves or blossom on it so that just let the light through but uh, I mean they've hardened off now so any new foliage like that coming through will be absolutely solid and here we've got the Mayer's variety uh, lemon which we had in the ground and it really struggled in the ground so last year we lifted it put it back in a pot and it's it's um it's uh, survived the winter so much better this year got a load of new growth on it hopefully once the weather warms up we'll start seeing some flower bud and uh, a bit more like that will come into some fruit by the end of the year. The giant leaf the hostas, they're coming through very well. There's a little bit of slug damage, but not so much that I'd worry about too much. We've got the, uh, the Xantodicias coming through. Um, I've got one I never boarded. That's actually got some flower spikes on it, so that's really good. But again, a bit of uh, slug damage on there. Now, because we've had so much rain, in February, March, and it's still coming into April and May. Slugs have been a real issue this year, and because the um, the, the decent slug pellets with the metaldehyde uh, active ingredient in there has now been banned, it's banned to buy, it's banned to use, it's becoming quite difficult to keep your slug and snail populations down to a point where you're not getting too much damage. So, um, it's been a struggle this year. It's been so much of it. We've been putting down the slug pubs, have been going out at night taking them. And um, even so, it's, it's still hard to get all of them. Now, you've got to be hot. You've got to be on it with your uh, slug protection, especially with the weather we've had on the south coast here, because it's, uh, it's, it's it's becoming quite hard work trying to keep on top of it all. Now, you, you can use the, uh, there's a nematode uh, solution that you can use where you, but it you've got to, you've got to buy it. It lasts about, two weeks you've got to keep it in the fridge you've got to um you've got to apply it when the ground is wet and then keep it wet so it's not a simple technique to keep down your slugs and snails so i think this year has been probably the been the worst worst year probably the worst year in about five six years for slugs and snails so if you're not keeping uh, your eye on it and uh, we're using a lot of slug pubs they do work but they're only clear about 80% of the snails, and as time goes on, you find it becomes less effective, so you might need to stop it and try something different, um, you know, like your nematodes, but, you know, it's hard work, it's hard work at the moment because the, the birds, the animals are not really taking them, but um, hopefully as, a, as time progresses and it warms up and dries out, we'll get some, get less of this issue with the slugs and snails left of now. An absolute pain in the neck. So this is the tree fern. Uh, we had these uh, fronds wrapped up, so as soon as they, 
the uh, get let loose and come down and get a hot day, you're gonna get some scorched leaves. But on the whole, um, there's still a lot of chlorophyll in these leaves, which is helping to power all this new growth. And um, I like to try and keep all these old leaves on for as long as I can, because as the new growth comes up, it sort of pushes out these leaves down. And that helps to maintain quite a, I need to take that off that bit down there. Uh, but it helps to maintain like the, the width of the, the trunk. So the trunk is quite big down there. And then uh, quite often you see people's uh, tree ferns and they start to shrink at the top. I'm going to try and avoid that by feeding a lot, by watering a lot, and by leaving these old fronds on as long as you can. Because um, it, like I say, it helps increase the, uh, the width at the top of the crown. So that's quite an important job to do. Um, but really a lot of it is just about getting enough water, getting enough fertilizer in here. Now I'm not gonna go into much more detail on that, but if you go onto our old videos, you'll find there's a lot more information on how to look after tree ferns there. Now the tetrapanics have done well this year. Now this really shouldn't be here because we dug out this plant and planted it somewhere else. But the thing is, if you leave a little bit of root left in the ground, you can, <laughs> that will actually take and produce a whole new plant. And that's what this is. And it's looking really smart. But behind it, we've got a, um, a rheum, which is one of the ornamental rhubarbs. And pff, look at the state of this. Flipping it, look at that. I mean, I don't know how big a slug is gonna do to rip all that apart, but I tell you what, I'm coming out tonight and I'm gonna sort him out. And if he doesn't do what he's told, I'm gonna to smack him in the face and uh, stand on his foot. But look at it, absolutely ruined. But I put down a slug pub there, but to be honest with you, I think he's gonna ignore it. Just keep on eating those leaves. Bloody size. Oh, I'm down there, look, look at that. There's a, there's a lily there. I'm not sure what lily it is, but last year, I forgot it was there and trodden it and snapped it. And uh, I thought I might have killed it, but it has come back. But again, more, Slug damage. Oh, this is one of my favorite plants in the garden. This is Fatsia duponica spider's web. And the reason why I love it so much is it's got an absolutely gorgeous kind of uh, variegation on the foliage. But the thing is, it also does really well in the shade. So we planted it underneath this tree. Don't look at my nose. So with the, the shelter of that and the shade, I mean, the, there can be issues with watering because if it's dry, then this tree will take up loads of moisture and keep this, and the, this will struggle and start to, uh, this leaves will start to flop, but you know, as long as you keep an eye on the watering, planted it next to a tree, then you've got the shade, and because it's so bright in the foliage, you can see that a mile away. It's a stunning plant, there you go. So the one for the shade, plus it's evergreen, Fatsia duponica spider's web. I recommend it. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I've got something important to say. If you've enjoyed this video or just find some of the information in it useful to you, then consider clicking on the like button. That way it makes it a lot easier for YouTube to find other people who want to find that information. Anyway, no further ado, let's continue finding out what old Boyle Butt has to say. The black bamboo is looking good. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some new stems coming through, but uh, they haven't come through yet and I wouldn't expect them to. But the I do like the black bamboo compared to the green bamboo or the yellow bamboo, which is your or golden bamboo, isn't it? The uh, Philostachys aurea, because this tends to stay in its clump, where the Philostachys aurea, the golden one, that just tends to motor out and takes over the whole garden. So always choose this form over that one. We've got an Aspidistra, popular with the uh, Victorians, and uh, that's surprisingly well planted outside all year round. This has been out here all year round. And we've seen these planted outside at Wisley, my favorite garden. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to take it out of the pot, we're going to chop that into four, we're going to plant that in the front garden because I've got a really lovely place for that. And, uh, and that's the Trachycarpus uh, fortunii that we planted a year or so ago. So it's only been in there about, I don't know, 18 months. And, uh, but the, the stem is really starting to rise up. It's really starting to look like a lovely specimen. So by the end of this year, this will probably be quite big. Got Canna Cleopatra, one of my favorites. That's coming back through. That went down to minus five last winter, and the winter before that went down to minus eight, and yet it's still here, still outside. And I haven't put any kind of winter protection on that. Uh, Arondo Donax, um, I think that's the Versi color, I'm not sure now. Um, that's all coming through. You can see the new ones down there. And we've got the uh, Dahlias coming through, they're doing very well. Hardy Fuchsia's coming through. Um, it's all starting to happen. The um, Camellias, they're starting to come to an end. Now we've got two of these. And originally in the last house, we had these both in pots, but once they got to a certain size, they really started to struggle. They kept drying out. They suffered, they were weak, and they started having problems with uh, the buds uh, dropping early, no good whatsoever. But this year, it's really increasing the size. I mean, it's 
probably almost doubled in size, and still in flower. This has been in flower about six weeks now. It's a fantastic variety. It's called Chinese Lace, and I thoroughly recommend that one too. This is Hostler Siberian Tiger, a really lovely striped leaf version of this. It's not a fantastically strong variety. I mean, it went in last year. It has put on some size. Um, it's not too bad. I was expecting it to be a bit stronger, but again, our slug issues are really causing me problems with this one because last year we didn't have it. But that's a great variety, but it's, it's a bit weak. I think the growth is a bit weak, but despite that, I would definitely, I'd definitely plant this again, or, or maybe next year I'll lift it split it and put a bit more somewhere else but i really like that maybe I want to put it in a pot with a bit of um copper copper tape around the outside to uh, try and keep them off but it's pretty it's a shame those leaves aren't bigger but i really like that and this here's another one of my favorites is vitus cognetii which is the um crimson glory vine now these leaves are going to get absolutely huge and they'll give really really good autumn color almost a dick well crimson glory vine it speaks for itself and uh, i'm hoping start it off in this frame and really by the end of the year I reckon this whole frame will be covered by it my poor agave is still waiting for temperatures to rise it needs to get going so it can finish absorbing all the uh, nutrition out of these old leaves and they'll just dry up and fall off and um, I don't think it's going to be really until the end of the year when this really starts to look impressive and I've got, I think I might have a problem with this uh, this Echium, Echium pininana Pitninana means small conifer. Um, she's a bit weird for a name. On the Canary Islands, it doesn't seem to be putting out enough growth here. And I'm wondering if we've got some stem damage down here. Because if we have, and that's this thing knocked on the head. Although we have got some flower bud in there, so we'll get some flower and some seed. But I'm not going to get the impressive flower spike that you'd expect from this. This is a Pfeiffer Boliviana, the Bolivian cactus uh, from Bolivia, would you believe it? I think and Peru as well. Uh, epi true epiphyte from, uh, grows in the like crevices of tree branches. And uh, look at that, we've, we've only had this uh, a year and uh, it's put on a good bit of growth over the winter because we brought this inside. It can stay outside until temperatures get down to about five degrees Celsius. Doesn't like it too hot, only likes it to about 30 degrees max, lower than that really. And he likes dappled shade. So being in this tree, in the UK, this can stay out really for most of the year, but really, once it starts to get below five degrees, you've got to bring it in. And uh, look, first time, you can have some flower on this this year, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. So we've got Nifofia coalescens, a red hot poker. This is the, the first one we've got coming into flower in our garden, although I have seen these in other people's gardens further ahead in flower, but we do have this in a, a touch of shade, it does get a lot of sun, it will flower absolutely fine. But again, we have another big problem with these, with the slugs and the snails, which I keep finding on these. We don't mind them so much uh, having a chew on the foliage, but look what they're doing to my blooms. Yeah, see, look at that. Now that, I find offensive, because when this, do oh, and, and they've had a little chomp on the side here. So this is gonna show a lot more once this, once this comes out and fully opens up. So you, you oh, they've chewed on the top of it there. They're little buggers, aren't they? So damage everywhere, and, and that's really annoyed me. Uh, so we have put down um, slug management to try and deal with this, but even so, they, they're just not taking it. They just want to eat these. So once again, I have to come out tonight, check over this plant, remove any of them. It caused me problems. Now, last year I took a bit of a, a risk in planting a few tender canna lilies. So we planted, I think it's red humboldt, and we also planted musifolia, which is like a banana leaf. And both of those considered tender. Um, got them both, planted them in different parts of the garden. I did put a bit of a, um, a dry mulch on top of them, like uh, bark chips, which is all I really use is bark chips as a dry mulch. Um, but happy to say that even though we had minus five degrees Celsius, both of these have come back fruit. So are they as tender as what people are saying? I would say anything, you, you, you check on the RHS list of hardiness and any plant, a plant is considered half hardy if it will tolerate between one and minus five degrees and then fully hardy between minus five and minus 10 degrees. So if, uh, and I definitely know the, um, the musifolia one, I didn't put any protection on because it was, it already had the, you know, it's under a tree next to a fence, so it should be fine. Um, both of these come back, so if they've taken minus five, are they fully hardy? Well, I'm not sure, but 
If you've planted these before and had lower temperatures than that, then let us now be interested to hear from you about that. So there you go, that's the Musifolia. So that's alive. And that is the red Humboldt. So that genuine proof that that is also alive too. So there you go, that's the hardy Japanese bananas, proving indeed, once again, they are very, very hardy. And even with minus five, the pseudostems, they're still intact. You can see where I cut them last year. Uh, you always get the uh, the initial leaves coming out a bit knackered. You know, we've had some storms already and uh, they've ripped all these apart. But, you know, once these secondary lot of leaves come through, it should come through, no damage whatsoever. I'll remove all these knackered ones and I should have a lovely looking plant. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, and I'm not so sure now, but I was hoping these are going to be mature enough to put out some flower and some... Uh, <laughs> maybe even some fruit although the fruit's not edible but give it a good sunny year maybe we'll see it I'm not sure I will now but um, over here we've got the tree tree lilies coming along look at that really good I love these that's that concha door concha door just be aware you get uh, there's plenty of uh, scarlet lily beetle around that might be having a chomp on these and we have had a bit of a bit of biting this one here you can see a little bit there a little bit there but on the whole these have been managed so um i put down a uh, some uh, insecticide or residual insecticide that lasts a couple of weeks once you spray it uh i don't mind doing that because it's not in flower but as soon as these come into flower you don't you can't be putting insecticides on it and really you want to finish your insecticide spraying about two weeks before these blooms open but for now there's no sign of them so spraying them is absolutely fine uh the biggest Tetra panics here. That's doing fine. We did have damage last year. Uh, when it got down to minus eight, he didn't like that at all. Um, but even so, he just shot up <laughs> new ones from the base. Again, if the root is fine, he just shoots up. It's a bit like a, a herbaceous characteristic. Another tracky carcass that's doing well. But we've got a little, little lovely over here. Yeah. This fellow here, that little thing there, that is Lobelia Cupa or the devil's tobacco and although it's not in flower yet the flowers on it are absolutely gorgeous Got that lovely lovely red sort of curly look to the blooms and I'm a big fan of them because um, they are quite exotic and they do have that characteristic red flowers that you expect in most exotic gardens anyway I think that's kind of it for a walk around the uh, the garden hopefully you've seen some things of interest and if you've got anything you'd like to add or comment on then you are more than welcome to do so just put it in the comment section We'd love to hear from you. Well, if you enjoyed that, we've got plenty more videos for you to look at. Just have a quick search into our video uh, library. Otherwise, you can check on this one here. And uh, if that's not your uh, cup of tea, try that one now. Enjoy, enjoy these while I've still got the energy to do them.